Hey looters, Flutes here. Today I want to talk about sneak attack tactics. Uh, sneak attack tactics for rogues today on Flutes Loot. I am Flutes and Opal is my wife and together we run flutesloot.com and we have articles that accompany our videos. So this one has an article with all the notes taken for you over on flutesloot.com. You can follow the link in the description, read it as you listen to my voice. So sneak attack. First of all, you want to either have advantage on an attack roll so that you can get sneak attack damage off or you want to have an ally next to the enemy. You also cannot have disadvantage on the attack. So I'm going to kind of do a speed round video here because there's a lot of different ways to deal with those things. And in the article, I list them all out. So I'm just going to start rattling these things off. It's going to be a speed round. It's going to get pretty hectic like Jurassic Park up in here. So hold on to your butts. Cutting action allows you to hide as a bonus action. If you're an elf, you can hide behind just some thick rain or some foliage. But the rest of us need to hide behind corners and such and get advantage as an unseen attacker. Your allies can use the help action with you or if you have a familiar or anything else like a Beastmaster's pet, you can have the help action given to you so that you can gain advantage on that attack. You can use flanking rules if you want to gain advantage that way, but I personally think the flanking rules are pretty lame for fifth edition. I wrote an article all about it, so I recommend not using flanking or picking a more fun version of it. Shove, push, push someone over and then you have advantage on melee attacks against them. Conditions can give you advantage if someone is paralyzed or stunned or something like that from your ally helping you out. You'll be able to get advantage just like with the shove that I just talked about because being prone is a condition. Tasha's Cauldron of Everything gave us the steady aim feature for rogues now where you can choose to use no movement on your turn and just use your bonus action to gain advantage on your attack. That's a handy way to do it. If you like riding a mount, which I think you should after my video about mounted rogues being very effective, you should take the mounted combatant feet so that you can gain advantage in all the little squishies that are smaller than your riding horse or giant elephant or whatever you are riding on. If you're a gnome, you can take the fade away feet so that when someone attacks you, you can go invisible and then attack them before the next turn to say, how dare you? You'll be an unseen attacker because you are invisible and that's gonna give you advantage. If you take the grappler feet, you can grapple someone to gain advantage against them while you have grappled them. Get athletics expertise so you can double your proficiency bonus and almost guarantee you're gonna succeed on those grapple checks so you can just start shanking them prison style with advantage for sneak attack. Martial Adept can give you some battle maneuvers that will give you advantage. Side note, the Lucky Feet does not give you advantage, so it will not help a rogue. It just makes you re-roll things, but you won't have advantage, so it won't help. If you're an arcane trickster, or there are spellcasters, or you have other ways to gain spellcasting, here are some spells that can help you with your sneak attack. Animate Dead can give you a whole swarm of allies that will use the help action even to make you really just wail on somebody with your sneak attack. Blindness Deafness can make them blind so they can't see you coming, and you have advantage. Conjure Minor Elementals can again surround an enemy and use the help action to grant you advantage. If it's dark, use the Dark Vision spell so that you can see in the dark and attack them. If they can't see at all, you are an unseen attacker and you have advantage. Fairy Fire gives you advantage against the glowing people. Find Familiar, help action. Everyone likes to do that, even though I think it's probably not going to work out most of the time. Grease, trip them up, gut them. Greater Invisibility, attack them over and over again as an unseen attacker. They might know where you are because of the noises you're making and everything, but they don't see you, so you have advantage. Hold Person, if they're paralyzed, you have advantage and you automatically crit if you hit. Hypnotic Pattern will incapacitate them, so you have advantage to hit. Invisibility, not as good as Greater Invisibility. Sleep, if they're snoozing, they're incapacitated and you can stab them. Tasha's Hideous Laughter makes them incapacitated on the ground laughing, and then you end their laughter very abruptly. Web, make them sticky and sitting ducks as you attack them with advantage because they are restrained. Now some specific subclasses that can get you advantage. The Arcane Trickster has their Mage Hand Ledger Domain that can allow you to gain advantage as a bonus action. Assassins, if they're disappointed they didn't kill someone in a one-shot ambush attack, they can find poisons that could potentially paralyze or stun enemies so that they can again attack with great effect. Inquisitive will allow you to analyze some chump and get sneak attack against them automatically. The Mastermind at level 9 can very easily perceive if someone has a low wisdom score so that they're bad at spotting you if you try to hide. So you can try to hide from those people specifically and try to take them out. That one's kind of a stretch, but it is helpful. Swashbuckler's rackish audacity can make it very easy to get sneak attack damage, so don't worry about it. Scouts and thieves later on can actually do sneak attack more than once in a round because a thief will get an extra turn and the scout's level 17 ability will give them another attack that can also do sneak attack to a separate target. Those aren't really ways to gain advantage directly, but you can make it work, or at least having two chances to hit with a sneak attack viable attack can be very nice. Multi-classing with a few of the fighter classes like the samurai or a barbarian class so that you can get reckless attack if you're focusing on strength and not dexterity. 
Again, the Battle Master's maneuvers can be very helpful, and the Gloomstalker Ranger's Umbral Sight can be super helpful. All of these, if you want a multi-class, can help you get Sneak Attack more consistently. Don't forget that you can use Sneak Attack as a reaction on opportunity attacks. So there's a lot of great ways to get into position and use your reactions out of your turn to gain Sneak Attack once again in the same round. Pretty much doubling your damage output. So anything you can do to do that is primo. So there you go. Sneak of tactics. Hopefully something was pointed out that you're like, oh, that is a good idea. Maybe I've been struggling to get sneak attack as a rogue. I think if you really dig in, you can find a lot of ways to secure your sneak attack and to use it very effectively. That's all I have for you today. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can scry on us every time that we have a video coming out. It will appear in the crystal ball that is your subscriptions. Don't forget to check out Opal's videos. She has a very different style than I do and she goes into a lot of lore. So if you're a DM, you can learn a lot from her. Or if you're a player and you want to go deeper into the lore of some of your classes, your characters, like uh, exploring more information about Warlock patrons, she has a great video on that. DM, she has a great video on crafting magic items that you can use to make that part of the fun of your game. Anyway, that's all I've got for Sneak Attack Dicks today. I'll see you in the next video, and I hope you have a good adventure this weekend. Bye.